What's going on, Fast Turn Radio watchers, listeners, replay catchers? Kathy, what's up? That's right, no gompers tonight. Been replaced by the Kathy Anderson because she said she wanted some love. So, Kathy, fist bump. Everybody else, fist bump. What's going on, people? Uh, we have 25 people or so in the crowd and uh, catching us live. So, thank you all for being here for the live show. And if you're catching the replay, thank you for listening to the replay. I, I do uh, check the stats and see how many replays were, were watched or listened to. And I got to tell you, I am very thankful and impressed by the number of people watching the replays and listening to the replays, either on YouTube where the videos are, SoundCloud where you can catch the uh, audio only version, which people seem very happy about because it saves on data. So whatever you guys want, it's what I'm here for. Try to try to take care of you, give you what you ask for. Uh, got Scan Power Shades on because we're going to talk about the Scan Power Conference in Orlando, which was awesome. Uh, the biggest, or really not the biggest complaint, the only complaint that I heard was why in the world would somebody do a conference in July in Orlando? And, you know, the, the only good answer is it's because of me. It was all my fault because I wanted to take the, I wanted to take the family to see the mouse. So I said, Chris, if you're going to do a conference and he was talking about the June, July timeframe, I said, you know, let's do a vacation combined thing so I can take the family, uh, go on vacation to Disney, catch a conference. So that was my fault. Bad call on my part for everybody else. I thought people would bring their families. A couple did, but most just came for the conference. And uh, so I apologize for the hot weather. Uh, probably won't do it in July in Orlando again. I had a blast. I loved it. Not all the participants thought that was a great idea. But anyway, so we are going to talk about the Scam Power Conference and just conferences in general. And uh, we got Sarah in the crowd. We're going to talk about Sarah's husband, Mindy, because he's awesome. And I got to meet him in person. Uh, Eric Frund, I'm probably saying that wrong, but uh, got to meet Eric, had dinner with him. That was cool. Got to know him pretty well over the uh, course of a couple of days. Real neat guy, just outgoing, gregarious kind of, I think is maybe the word. Um, just everybody. So cool, really. Um, yeah, let's see. Craig B, which means Florida hot. Go to Miami even better. No, no doubt. I, I don't doubt that a bit. I, I've been to Miami a couple of times. Usually I'm passing through on my way to the Keys, but it's been, I don't know, probably 20 years since I've been there. But uh, yeah, it was, it was a little warm, a little toasty. But I'm from South Georgia, so it's really not that big a deal. I mean, the, the weather is almost the same. And, you know, we kind of had a plan. It was like you go to the parks early in the morning and you hit the resort. And, and just kind of chill out in mid-afternoon, and then you go back to the parks that night. We loved it. We got to ride all kinds of rides. Uh, had five days at the park. At least family did. I took a couple of days to go to the uh, conference. But anyway, it's good times. Um, so we'll talk more about the conference, because that's kind of the big thing. Uh, going to talk about the road to 500K, give you some uh, updates on back to school, and try to get your butt motivated if you haven't already started the back to school stuff. Um, and we're going to talk about printers. Isn't that exciting? Printers. Everyone likes printers. I've ordered so many printers in the last couple of days. It's ridiculous, but I've learned some valuable lessons. Um, <laughs> NYC, that's where I am in. Yeah. NYC. You, you, you can have NYC. I drove through New York and almost got ran off the road on the way to Vermont. So yeah, you can have your New York traffic. Not my thing. Uh, haha, CG in the house. Apparently, CG went to bed early because he's all like laying down. It's kind of weird. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll bring – Chris, you want to come on now? Might as well have you on now. We can talk about Scan Power Conference, get your thoughts on it. I will obviously give my thoughts. I think I have to unmute you, though. You're going you're gonna to prop yourself up for this one. Hang on a second. <laughs> Didn't know Chris was taking a nap. I'm going to come on camera. All right. We got you unmuted now. You are on camera. You're good to go. Dude, the first thing I want to say is what's up to Annette White because she is awesome. Annette is awesome. She is awesome. I didn't know you knew Annette. Have you met you know her? Everybody. Have I've been to enough conferences that I know everybody. <laughs> I've been to enough conferences that I know a good conference when I go to one. And I think you do too now. I, I do. I mean, between Providence, I was thinking about this because you asked me. You said best conference ever. And I said, no, I think Providence was better. But I tell you, the more I think about it, it's really, it's almost like choosing between your, your two kids, you know, which, which kid's your favorite. It's like, 
they both just they they were awesome conferences because they were small. Uh, you know, it was kind of an exclusive group. It wasn't a lot of new sellers. Not that I have anything against new sellers, but it it's a different level of conversation that takes place when you have people willing to to put out a higher dollar and and travel you know all across the country to be there. It's just it was a different conference. Well, dude, we're not putting out high dollar because the new conference, the new style, it's invitation only. Yeah, that, that's true. You, that get invited. you can't just buy your way in. So A lot of people said they like that too, and, you know, and, and you kind of pick and choose who gets to be there. And, uh, you know, again, it's not, it's not to be mean. It just, it raises the level of conversation. It raises your business. It, and if you're in that exclusive group, my God, there is so much to be taken out of there. You know, I, I, I felt bad, but this is the kind of stuff I was facing. You know, Sam Cohen's up on stage speaking, which I, I met Sam just for a minute. You know, I, I'd never met him before. And I really wanted to listen to him speak. But then Mindy's like, hey, I wanted to talk to you about this QuickBooks stuff. And I know my accounting is a mess. So I'm like, yeah, I, I really want to listen to Sam speak. But this is the opportunity to talk to Mindy, a guy from Miami that I'm never going to see otherwise, you know, so we went out in the hallway for about 20, 30 minutes and just talked about QuickBooks. You know, as exciting as that is, but that was the, you know, do you want to listen to, to someone high powered like Sam, have a conversation one-on-one -on -one with somebody like Mindy or half a dozen, not, not even half a dozen, 50 other people in the room of that same caliber. It, it was incredible, man. You did great. No, the next one will be perfect. I, I know exactly what we need. Every bathroom break is going to be an hour long. Yeah. Dude. like scheduled to be an hour long. So it's not a, I really want to let people chat, but we really got to keep on schedule. And it wasn't that I was trying to be like a schedule, like be crazy about it, but we had lunch coming up and lunch was hot and ready. And if we hang up for 30 minutes, it's going to be cold and not as good. That's the only reason I was kind of on the clock. Other than that. Yeah. I think we should start a little later, have longer bathroom breaks and, uh, and definitely have a more off schedule organization to be like, Hey, we are meeting at the cabana at eight 30 and get more people there instead of just the people who just happen to see the Facebook post or just happen to know, you know, be more organized on that front. But it's, yeah, yeah I mean, it, it works best when they're not like they're, they're nonprofit conferences. Like I get just as much value out of going and organizing it than if I was charging a lot of money and keeping the, the money. And when you have the right people, it doesn't cost money, yeah. right? Like you got to pay for the food and the conference rooms and all this stuff. Um, but it, is really not that expensive when you break it down. Yeah. Right? And you know, you had Jason Smith that flew in in a heartbeat from Las Vegas. Um, excuse me. Uh, why does her name, I always see her face and I can't remember Irma's name. I always have a problem just pulling. You can't remember Irma's name? I can't. Uh, but yeah. So Irma flew in from California, you know, like no questions asked. I'm going to be there. Andy, Pennsylvania. Boom. Done. You know, it was just Sam. And the law Jersey. was there. John Lawson. Yeah, John Lawson. Of course, he's in Atlanta. It's not that far, but... Well, he doesn't He doesn't normally sit in on the rest of the conference when he goes. Oh, really? He sat in on this one because he, he had did. a great time. And we chatted later, and he'll, he's a straight shooter. He'd tell me, like, hey, this was okay. He's like, dude, dude, this is the way conferences should be done. I had dinner with John at the end of the conference. I went to dinner with Eric, uh, the Young Guns, John, and uh, Steve Sawyer, and, and Kelly. So, you know, that was, our, you know, KIB was there too. Uh, she's part of the Young Guns, even though she's the, the mother of the group. But, you know, so, I mean, that was an incredible table just to have dinner. And I'm sitting next to John. Dude, that, that hour or so, maybe even two hours, it was a while. But that I got to just talk one-on-one -on -one with John, dude, yeah. 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 We, we got some plans. I, I get to work with John Lawson. That's pretty freaking cool, man. It's a shortcut way to relationships. You can, you can like beg to hang out with John on Facebook all day long. It's not going to happen. You meet in person. It's, it's just different. I mean, how much teleconferencing do we have? How much telepresence, video conferencing, FaceTime, email, all this contact we can have without being in, in person. And let me guess, the last four flights you've been on were full. People are flying. Prices are up. I mean, people want to be face-to-face. -face. And as long as people want to be face-to-face, and are willing to pay 400 bucks a ticket to go somewhere, you, you know that means something. Otherwise, we'd all sit there and we'd FaceTime for Thanksgiving. 
Yeah, I, I bumped into John in the hallway. He was actually the first person I saw as I came into the hotel. And, uh, you know, I saw him standing in line for breakfast or something. And you know, I just started talking to him. And then after a second, I was, you know, we talked for maybe 30 seconds or a minute. And I looked at him. I said, you don't even know who I am, do you? And he said, yeah, man, we, we had dinner in Vegas. He's like, I remember you. You know, because, I mean, we really did not talk for very long. But he's like, dude, you eat with somebody, you remember them. And, yeah. you know, it's true. It, it's much different than... Oh, I, even if you see them on a, a spree cast or a Zoom, you know, it's, it's that one-on-one -on -one time. It's different. Yeah. Dude, we got another conference. I'm flying out tomorrow, Midwest Ecom. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people that I know there. It's going to be a different format, so I'm not trying to, like, compare yeah. and contrast. I'm not trying to compete with a traditional conference with vendor booths and all that. What we're doing with our invitation-only meetups, workshops, that's different. I, I mean, they really shouldn't be called conferences because that's – that's yeah. not really what they are. I don't know no. what we'll call them, but I'd love to do multiple a year and uh, get the right people there. Maybe you come to all of them and, and maybe people can't come to all of them and just come to one because it's more of get what you need to get, then get your nose to the grindstone and get it done. Not yeah. go to every conference, right? You can go to every conference if you want. You're going to miss out on the execution in between. Yeah. I, you know, I told you, I don't even want speakers as much as I enjoyed listening to Andy. And, and John was amazing. And Anna had just a ton of information and on and on and on. I mean, the speakers were great, but I swear I'd rather just have a conference with no speakers. No vendors. Well, there have to be some organization because half, the sellers, out. <laughs> because half the sellers are introverts and you, and you have to set it up. You have to say, okay, who are you? Let's talk about, you know, there's that part. And I told you, get know. out of here. Get, go in the hallway. I did. I stopped listening. You know, it's just like, forget it, man. I'm, I'm going to hang out with people because I truly have a hard time listening to speaker after speaker, regardless of who they are. Because I just feel like I'm missing such an opportunity to speak with the powerhouses in the room. So it's really, it's not a disrespect to anyone speaking. It's just, dude, I came to talk to people. I want to do that. Not listen. Ooh, that's why I said it. Since Providence, now since Orlando, the next one we do will be perfected. I think we'll find the right balance of kind of leadership, vision, uh, all this stuff, and, and have the right amount of time for this, right amount of time for that. Uh, I mean, the budget will be even better. I mean, we, we all spent 50 bucks on each person to drink all you can drink for three hours, and half the room didn't drink. <laughs> right? So we're, we're going to be able to shave the, uh, the budget down even yeah, more. I wasn't even there for that. And Dude, I you missed that way. We carry open. <laughs> yeah, I still haven't watched the video, but I heard. I heard you guys killed it. <laughs> it was intense, man. I, I can't wait. I, I do. I do these every month, but it's not about doing uh, events. It's about executing in between. So I'm, I do. I am so busy executing. You have no idea. I've chatted with you a little bit today about what I'm working on. GDFR should be up and ready today. Uh, finally, got the affiliate rebate uh, program rocking. Uh, another Udemy course should be approved tonight. I'll probably do a 24 hour free launch as soon as it starts. And uh, if you're coming to Midwest Ecom, I'm going to have some sweet deals. Uh, very generous, aggressive <laughs> stuff for anybody that meets me at a conference. Cause Hey, we meet up. Hey, it's different. You're going to get, uh, get some cool stuff. So good deal, man. No, the, uh, the conference was great. It, it really was. Don't get me wrong. I'm just, I'm just really picky, but it, it was awesome. It you was, are picky. We almost didn't even do it because you weren't willing to travel more than a hundred miles from your house. <laughs> Tired of traveling. I hate traveling. You know, I hate flying. I'm not a fan of flying. I'll do it if I have to, but man, I don't like to. Just, <laughs> well, we'll do it in Orlando every time. Yeah, thanks. Same hotel. Here's I don't, what we do. I don't hey, know if you Thomas has to bring a remote control boat, and we're just gonna like go crazy on that lake. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I don't know if you caught my intro, but yeah, I, I already took responsibility for the, the misery that was Orlando in July, you know. Dude, I like it hot. It's freaking summer, right? Like, get over the heat. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. I, I was we okay. All, we I heard a lot of people it's saying, oh, it's not hot. It's summer. I want to go to the beach. Yeah, Orlando in February would work. I don't know. It's too cold in February. Well, let's start. I mean, there is another big conference coming in February. Uh, the Prosper Conference, which is be the first one, so I don't have a lot to compare oh, it to, right. but it is a pretty high, uh, as far as I can tell, pretty high level conference. And then we got you know the, the Monkey Cruise in January. We got the Sea Commerce Cruise in February, and probably March is going to be when we'll do 
our next conference. Um, but it'll be for the uh, fundraiser. Gonna, you're going to try to tie it into ASD, or are you going to do that too? Because that's when ASD is first of March, first part of March. I consider it. I mean, you'll be involved in, in some way. Uh, so let, let's chat about that, because I would, I would really like to give people who want to get in on that conference an early shot because it's going to be a fundraiser. It's probably going to be, it's at least a thousand. I might make it 1500. And uh, I mean, it'll include everything except your airfare and your hotel. Once you get there, basically that's scam powers donations. We're going to foot the bill for the conference rooms and the food and the, the hospitality, but we'll, maybe we'll do a hundred people at 1500 a piece. If we can raise 150 grand, then scam power will foot the bill for uh for the conference, but guys, you guys get the value from the conference. <laughs> Not, <laughs> if we do it up like this, I mean, you've heard Dwayne like gush over this conference. Yeah. That's the value. And you guys don't, Dwayne is like the most practical. If I don't get like, you know, value out of this, then why am I going to go? If, yeah, if Dwayne's all in on it, then man, you know, it's, uh, there's no corners being cut. Yeah. I, I, you know, there, there is, there is a certain conference coming up. People said, why aren't you going? I said, I didn't get the value out of it last year. Not paying to go to it this year. Not happening. People are like, really? You're not going? Dude, I, have, I do have a high standard for conferences. I do not want to waste my time. You know, even, even there, paid 400 bucks to go, and I sat in the hallway. And it was just not, it, it wasn't scam power. That conference was freaking awesome. So, well, we'll not, do more of them. Park, man. We may make it better along the way. You may make it better. I don't know. Oh, we'll make it better. Dude. I mean, this one was, was great. just incredible. Yeah. Each one that you do will always get better. And unfortunately, so many things or, or ideas or people, they, they never get to that point because they're so afraid of the first one being bad that they never get to the second one, which is also bad. <laughs> it's marginally better. But the 10th time, I mean, I taught David to dive in the pool and I put a pool noodle out, right? Like, like a, a foot above the edge of the pool. And I was like, you have to jump over this. And if you, I promise if you do this 10 times, you'll learn to dive. That that's it. He learned in two. All right. He jumped over that stick. He figured out, okay, I have to jump out and up, not just <laughs> like frog fall or, you know, cannonball took him two tries. And that's, I mean, that's all it took for us for this conference is two tries. But if we weren't ever willing to, to try it, then these conferences and everybody, I mean, half the people in here, I think we're at the conference. I mean, Eric's in here, uh, you know, it's, it's incredible what can be done once you remove the fear of failure and. Yeah. And, and, and not be afraid to, to talk with people, you know, get out there. And I, I, people won't believe this. I am a natural introvert. I've been pulled out of that shell kind of because I get to do this show. So when I walk into a conference, it, the first time I walked into a conference, I sat in the back with three people I knew and didn't say a word. You know, I was just scared to death. Um, now I feel like I'm walking into a room full of friends. So it's a little different. You know, it's not that I'm any less introverted. It's just crap. I know everybody there. So what am I afraid of? But it, if, if you're not that person and you don't know everybody in there, my God, don't, don't sit back waiting for someone to come talk to you. Get over it. Get over it and go talk. You know? Dude, I got a challenge for you, Dwayne. Then I'm, I'm going to have to run. <clears throat> Can you find the first picture you ever sent me? First picture. Was that the, <laughs> was that the one with the book? With the book you know, and you look like, back. <laughs> you look like such a little nut. I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> who is this goober? This yeah. guy is. This is not going to end well. Like the profile that I that I made for you based on one picture, not knowing you, was like, <laughs> this guy's going to be a high maintenance stalker, very <laughs> needy. Um, oh, great! And he's I'm, he's going to see. Yes, he's probably going to want to like, you know, follow me around like a puppy. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Find that picture and ask people to a stereotype this character. I mean, it was so long ago. I don't know how, how you even find it. Uh, yeah, I, I know it's probably on my phone. It, it might be in my Dropbox. All right, um, see if you can find it. I'll see if Not I can right come now, up with it. I, I'll, uh, I'll put it up on Facebook. I'll dig it up somewhere. Dig Wait, it up. No, I, I did. I said, Chris Green, someone I'm going to meet at this conference. And, uh, and I did. So, you know, I got over that fear. 
course, I went on stage too. That was. <laughs> I'm just gonna face all my fears. Screw it. <laughs> Get it done, man. But, uh, yeah, it was good stuff, man. It was good. My my biggest right. regret is not being able to to talk to more people. Well, that's why the conferences don't get too big because you can't want, I mean, I don't think we'd ever go past a hundred. If we need to go past a hundred, we yeah. do multiple. Yeah. Because no, you I just don't. lose the dynamic at two. You can't meet everybody at 200. Nope. You, can't, you know, it's just different. No, I'm with you. But, uh, Hey, uh, Mark Levine is in the, the crowd. I saw for a second. Mark has the coolest little marketing tools. He sent me a, a like extendable back scratcher. Like yeah. it just says bubble fast. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna see Mark tomorrow. Send you little tape guns. He's awesome. And oh, by the way, he ships out in a freaking heartbeat. Like I've ordered stuff at five o'clock at night, and it shipped the same day. Like, All right. I, I know he's on Central Time, but my God, you know he flags your account, man. He gives you good, good uh, service. Bubble fast rocks. I, I, yeah. So shout out to Mark. I just saw him in the crowd. So tell him I said hi when you see him tomorrow. I'm telling him now, but you know it's always different in person. Yep. No, we'll be jamming tomorrow. So it'll be good. All right, man. All right. Fast Thanks turn radio. <laughs> good to jam with you guys. Listen to Dwayne. He's a smart cat. All right. Later, Chris. All right, dude. Yeah, guys, you, you know me. That was that was no fluff. That there you go. You know, uh, the conference was amazing, and I did. I had to choose between go talk to Mindy in the cra- or in the hallway or listen to Sam Cohen on stage. Um, you know, Matt uh, Bender was there and, and you know that he was up on stage people were like who's matt bender i'm like trust me you're gonna want to hear from matt bender and uh you know it was just it was incredible just the stuff people came up with and in the ideas that they had and the different backgrounds and the uh, diverse business models and it was just it was insane so yeah interesting is probably a, a good word mindy and uh what's up by the way Already talked about you a few times here. I don't know if you were here, in, if you heard that or not. But uh, uh, yeah, thanks to Mindy. I do want to give you a personal, just big shout out for a second. Mindy took time with me in the hallway, showed me, you know, different stuff. We chatted afterwards. I came home, crunched some numbers. And I was like, dude, my books are a mess. I, I, I have an overall view of what my business looks like, but help me figure it out. Now, first of all, he has a system that I couldn't duplicate if I wanted to. I mean, he showed it to me. It was amazing. He knows stuff that I will never know. And it was just incredible. But I took some of what he showed me. I took some of what Anna told me and what she shows Anna Hill in her accounting. We will go uh, is her Facebook group. So I took some of the information from the people that I met, came home, crunched my numbers, found out some good stuff, found out some bad stuff. But you know what? I wouldn't have known even how to approach the mess that I had on my hands had I not gotten to that conference and spoken with Anna and spoken with Mindy. So Mindy, I appreciate it, man. Uh, the, the little chat that we had this morning was very eye opening. So, you know, it just, it carries on after the conference and uh, Mindy's a cool guy. The only thing that surprised me, he was not as tall as I thought. He was, he was a little shorter, but <laughs> he was a great guy, big, big beard. Awesome. And uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was cool. Um, he said, gee, thanks. It, it's true. I, I thought you were going to be like this towering because I see you on camera and you got the big beard. And I was like, holy crap, this dude's like, you know, 6'5", 250. No, <laughs> not, not the case. But that's why you meet people in person, get to know them. Uh, bald spot. See, I didn't even notice a bald spot. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was incredible. I could sit here and just name names all day of who was in attendance. If you guys are interested in going next time it is invite only um you know of course we'll like chris said gonna do the uh sounds like we'll do the the um sponsorship what's what i'm looking for the donation to get into the next one but as far as invite only yeah if you you can get on that ticket do it um it's incredible totally uh just blew me away so enough with the conference um and it does beat every other conference out there i'm going to tell you right now uh Let's talk, let's talk printers for a second. Let's just totally switch gears, all right? Printers, because this is just fun stuff for me. All right, I ordered, I ordered uh, a Dymo 4XL when it was on sale for like 115 bucks, because, you know, when don't you just maybe need an extra printer? 115 bucks for regularly, what, $150, $160 printer, jumped all over it. Um, 
Okay, so the 450 Turbo, <laughs> I can show you what's, what's left of mine. The 450 Turbo is a little guy, right? The 4XL, which I do not have in front of me, is about, it's at least twice as wide as the, um, the 4XL is at least twice as wide as the 450 Turbo. Okay, and that's made for printing shipping labels, but it can also print all the other labels too. So the 4XL can print basically any Dymo label under the sun. So it's good to just have in case something happens. Uh, no, you cannot use the UPS labels because there is a cutout when you look at Dymo, the roll of Dymos. Let me open this up. I probably won't ever use these. No, I won't. These are like the postage ones. Okay, so see that little hole? The labels you get from UPS will not have that little hole. So you can't use the labels from UPS. Now you can use them on a zebra. That's right. If you have a zebra, you can use them there. But um, so <clears throat> I had the 4XL. I got a label wrapped around. It was my fault, but I got a label so stuck on the roller. It's just, uh, not even the roller, like underneath the roller, it got stuck like crazy how it got stuck on that stinking little 450. So in the dirt, all right, I took it apart, spent about an hour. I was like, these things cost 70 bucks. How much time am I going to spend trying to fix this stupid printer? Uh, yeah, I'm not, okay? So what's the advantage of the 450? Oh, what, what is the advantage over the 450 Turbo? Um, just that it can print all size labels. So if you want to print shipping labels, you can. If you want to print the small labels, you can. It's just a good backup printer. So if you can get it for 115 bucks, to me, it's worth it. Because like my, my little turbo died, right? And so I turned and I went and plugged in the 4XL. The four uses the same driver. So all you do is plug it in. Computer, if it recognized the 450, it's going to recognize the 4XL. Print it up. I had a big wholesale order going out. So print it up just like 100 labels. Got the shipment out the door. I was happy. Um, and then I went to order the new printer. And I said, you know, I, two things came to mind. One, how this little 450 got hosed up. And here's the rest of him. Poor little guy. See, he's missing his nose. But uh, so, you know, single unit, right? Nothing mechanically went wrong with it. It said I got a sticker stuck. So I thought if I got the twin turbo, now I've basically got two printers in one. Hang on. So this is what the twin turbo looks like. Okay, it's basically two 450s stuck together. And the twin turbo is about the same size as the 4XL, but it's like two 450s in one. They, they just sit side by side. And uh, so I thought, man, if I did the same thing with that twin turbo, I could have just printed on the other side of the printer. I, I, you know, I wouldn't have been out, you know, wouldn't have been out of commission. So that's one reason I wanted the twin. Secondly, I change reels just a couple of times a month, but it irritates me because I'll, I'll print out mailing labels, which are on a different size label than what I use for my, uh, for my, my products that I send in, my FN SKU stickers. So I have to change out the reel. It's not a big deal, but it's a little bit irritating. Go find the other labels, you know, take this one off, make sure you get it on right, all that, you know, a couple minutes later you're printing, but my God, it just irritated me. So the, the twin turbo kind of killed two birds with one stone. Um, it gives me a, a built-in backup, essentially, and I can now print two different types of labels. So I went with the twin turbo, very happy with it. Again, didn't have to download any new drivers, unplugged the 4XL that was taking the place of my 450 turbo, put in my twin turbo, boom, up and printing, first time, no problems. So you can select which side of the, the printer you're using, depending on what you're printing out. So very convenient. Uh, I highly recommend all of them. If you are doing some mobile sourcing, which is going to kind of be a thing, I, I have a very strong feeling you're going to see some stuff from me doing it in fourth quarter. Uh, but if you're going to be on the road sourcing, then the 450 can kind of do it all for you. So that, that's, uh, that's definitely the mobile solution. If you want a couple of different printers, you can have the 450 and the, the XL. Lots of options, but Dymo, solid little products. I like them all. It was my fault that I screwed up this one. And uh, anyway, that's, that's my little 
you know, I, I tell you guys to be prepared, and I'll, I'll say this more as we get into the fourth quarter and kind of my preparation, just like I did last year, but I'll tell the new people, um, you know, have backup printers, have backup ways of getting the job done, because if you don't, it will bite you at the worst possible time. So I was glad I had the 450 just sitting in a box waiting to go, or excuse me, the 4XL. I'm glad I had the twin, have the twin turbo now. Um, you know, even if you just have to give it yourself a, a 450, it's not bad to have an extra one. They're about 70 bucks. That is cheap insurance. So here you go. That's my pitch. Now I'm going to read some questions and see what we can answer. Um, is this for MF when you say mailing labels? It could be, but no, like I have to actually mail a check for my water bill. So like every month I have to print a mailing label. Now I could write it out by hand. I just don't like to, I don't like my handwriting and I don't like writing. So I just save the label and I print it out. And, uh, there's a couple other things that I actually mail physical letters. So I just print out little mailing labels. That's all. Um, you could probably do it for MF, I guess. I don't, but those I usually do on a shipping, on a, a shipping label. So that's different. Uh, can you print the large labels that you, can you print the large labels that you print on 4XL on the twin turbo? No, no. Uh, the twin turbo, if you look at it, now I'll show you the picture again. These labels that you see coming out, see how it's like two different pieces? It truly is like two 450s in one. So as wide as it gets on one side is the width of a 450. So you can't print the big labels, the big shipping labels. They just won't fit. So no, you, you cannot use it for that. Um, <laughs> aren't you glad you tried the Dymo? Yes. Oh, I just hit my mic. Yes, I am. I am extremely happy with the Dymo. I still have my Zebra sitting here, which is a workhorse. I hate to knock on the Zebra, but man, the, the, the Dymo is just so much easier to, to use and to switch in and out. And there's, the Zebra is kind of a pain to get set up. It's a slow to print. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy with the Dymo. But again, Zebra, total workhorse. I've had that thing. It was refurbished when I bought it and I've had it for years and it still would work right now if I plugged it in. Uh, you should see my shopping list for backup equipment for the warehouse. That must be Flanagan. Yeah. Okay. It scrolled down. Yeah. I knew that was Mike. Mike just got his warehouse. Congratulations, buddy. And uh, I've already taken advantage of it a little bit myself. I will say selfishly, I, I uh, begged him to help me with some stuff and he did. Uh, so I'm glad Mike has a warehouse. <laughs> Very cool. Um, let's see. Mike says I have to use multiples of everything needed to get product out. There are if I were to lose more than an hour of productivity at the warehouse, it, it would set us way back. Yes, sir. Definitely. And that, that's what I finally, after trying to fix this thing, I was like, why in the heck am I trying to fix this? Just buy a new one. You know, they're almost disposable. They're almost cheap enough that you can just throw them away. Uh, you know, and then you end up with like little extra reels and stuff and extra power cords. Now I got spare parts too, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, Dymo was probably the easiest, single easiest peripheral to set up I never, I ever encountered. Yes, it is very simple. Um, the Q, QL570, I don't know anything about it. Sorry, I, I saw somebody ask something about that earlier on. I don't know anything. So if you guys know about the QL whatever, dude, have at it. QL700, that, that was the other one. Um, yeah, you can have a conversation in the chat room or on Fast Turn Radio on the... Uh, Facebook page, carry on the conversation over there. I just, I don't know anything about it, so I can't really help. Um, so that's my pitch for right now on the Dymo. Get them. And if you're going to buy one, just spend the extra money. My personal opinion, it was 110 for the twin turbo. Right now on sale, you can get the 450 for $70. So it's about $40 more, but you're getting two printers in one. Um, you know, to me, it's worth it for the twin turbo. If you're on a tight budget, just get the 450 and go with that. So that's my advice. All right. Um, let's see. The other couple things we got back to school and the road to 500K. So let's do the back to school real quick. All right. Stuff's already selling. Newsflash. Uh, we are nowhere near August and everything is, is starting to sell. You're seeing those ranks come way down. Uh, products across the board. I've seen some back to school items that are sub 500 in toys already. Um, seeing some that are sub 1000 in office products, guys, it, it's here. So if you did not prepare, uh, you're a little late to the party, but you're not too late 
because I discovered something else. I've been talking about the peak being like August, you know, second week and third week of August is the peak. You know, the more I look at my numbers, it carried on strong into September as well. Um, so, you know, you still have time. You're not going to catch that first wave, but you can definitely catch the, the crest of it all. So whatever product lines you've decided to go into, my sister-in-law totally ignored my mega bundle advice and she made a mega bundle with a character backpack and she sold one yesterday. So what do I know? I did, you know, to what happens. I, I give the best advice I think I'm giving. And then she goes, Hey dummy, I'm doing this anyway. And you know, proves me wrong. So I hope she sells all, all that she made. And, uh, you know, just goes to show that people are buying stuff. So if you're creating bundles, regardless of what kind they are, if they're backpacks with all the, all, all the bells and whistles and glue sticks and all that have at it. Not my thing, not a chance that I would do it. But like I said, my sister-in-law straight up proved me wrong. She's like one soul sucker. <laughs> I said, congratulations. <laughs> you know, I said, that's awesome. I, I wouldn't, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't going to bet on it, but I'm glad she did. And I'm, I'm glad it worked out well. So hopefully they will sell many, many more during the season. Uh, so that, that's just, uh, I'm, I'm starting to see a move guys. So really I went to Walmart the other day, found a product that is, you know, basically double your money and, uh, ranked sub 2,500. So, you know, the stuff's out there. It, it's, it's starting to move. So open your eyes. Even if you're, even if you didn't get into the wholesale side of stuff, start looking through the, the back to school eyes. Start to understand what's popular. What movies just came out? Think about it. It's not hard. Go find it. Sell it. It'll sell well. I promise. Uh, it's out there. That's all. That's that's it. That that's as much as that's as much of a carrot as I can give you. Um. Okay. So the final thing: the road to 500k. And with this will come some of the conversation that I had with Mindy. Because man, he opened my eyes to some things. Um, so let's, first of all, let's go ahead and get the, uh, get everything set up here. All right. Looks like we're all logged in. Sorry. My nose is itching. Okay. Where'd everybody go? There you are. All right, you guys ready to talk about the road to 500K and what that all means and entails and all that good stuff. All right, so here we go. You should see my screen and uh, you'll see that our previous balance was 10,239. And uh, that was about six days ago, five days ago. I don't know, we got it on a Friday. Our uh, current balance is already at 4,000. So pretty excited about that. Now, I was a little disappointed in this 10,000 when I broke down the numbers. You know, I don't talk about profit a lot, but I'll tell you the profit on this after I broke it all down was about 2,400, 2,350, 2,380, somewhere in that neighborhood. Excuse me, somewhere in that neighborhood. So it was not as high as I would have liked. Um, but there was a lot that went into that. Like I was selling some flips that I bought for $23 that I sold. For 2250 because I was coming up on long-term storage fees. Amazon has not gone out of stock in months. I bought this like in Q4 last year. So coming up against long-term storage fees, these things are big, taking up lots of room. So I said, forget it. I'm cutting them at a loss. So I think I had 25 of those all together and sold them for a loss of what turned out to be almost $10 each. Well, you know, on one hand, so 25 of them, sold at 22.50, all right, is $562 in sales. You go, yay, that's good, yay, great, whatever, $562, that's awesome. And out of that, you would expect, you know, typically I tell you 20% is what your uh, profit's gonna be. So you would expect a profit of eh, $560, somewhere between 1,000 and 1,200, somewhere in that neighborhood or um, excuse me, between 100 and 120 is your expected profit. What was my profit on this? It wasn't anything. I lost, what, almost $250 on that sale of 562. So, you know, it's a funny time of year where I'm selling off some stuff and uh, it's boosting our, our capital 
And that's something that I talked to many about. I was, you know, when we crunch the numbers, he's like, if you don't watch it, you might run into a cash flow problem. And uh, so I was, you know, thought about that, getting the capital out. And that's part of what that is, is, hey, these were bad buys. These are things where I have hundreds of dollars and in some cases, thousands of dollars tied up and they were bad buys and I need to liquidate those and I need to get that capital out because we're coming into the busiest time of year. Back to school leads to Halloween, leads to Q4, like the heart of Q4, right? Black Friday and all that good stuff. This is the launching pad. Right now, it is vital that you have capital to spend on back to school so that you make profit, so that you can spend it on Halloween, so that you make profit, so you can spend it on Q4. It was a yeah, tough pill to swallow, but it's something that I felt like I had to do. You see the capital is coming back, though. Uh, as tough as it was to, to look at those numbers and see, and that $10,000 payout was on about 16,000 in sales. So 16,000 in sales should have been somewhere between 32 and 3,500 in uh, profit. And instead it was 2,350. Sometimes the numbers just, man, they hit you hard. They hit you harder than you expect them to, but that's the facts. So what are, uh, well, let's, let's look at the numbers a little deeper here. So we'll go into business reports and all right, not a bad day today, $738, uh, yesterday, 1200 <laughs> same day last week. Who, who here is a fan of prime day? Huh? Anybody in the crowd? Anyone? Um, <laughs> yeah, you see, we did a little over $3,000 on prime day. It was insane. Um, so yeah, yeah, I was, I was going to get to this, but I figured I'd, I'd wait till I showed you because it just happened to be last Wednesday and man, everybody was sitting there and just, you know, we're checking our phones at the conference and it's just like every time you hit refresh and I saw people that had $12,000 days and $8,000 days. And, you know, we had a $3,000 day, which is about triple our normal. Um, yeah, Robert saying best day ever. Um, yeah, Leron, <laughs> what's, what's better than a shoehorn on sale? Yeah, we, we blew through so much stuff. It was ridiculous. Uh, sold lots of Christmas items on Prime Day. Very cool, Karen. Congratulations. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of speculation going into it. You guys asked, what, what did I think would happen with Prime Day? And what would be the uh, after effects? I'm not seeing a lot of change after effect. Um, <laughs> yeah, August reminded me of something. I'll tell you guys in a second. but. Uh, I haven't seen much of a change after Prime Day, but I sure as heck saw a boost on Prime Day. Uh, it was incredible. When, when I checked, Agu said, um, I don't want your $5. What happened was he was a little late coming into the conference the, the second day, I think. It, yeah, it was Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So it was the second day. So it's like 9.30, maybe 9.45. I look at my phone and I think we were at like, what was it, $300, two, 275 at the time. And I was like, August sits down. I was like, dude, you're over a thousand. He's like, no way. I, and we, we don't do a thousand this early in the morning. I said, dude, if I'm at almost 300, you are over a thousand. Five bucks says so you're over a thousand. I laid it down. I said, you're over a thousand. I keep it under a thousand. You keep it. I'm telling you right now. It wasn't really a, it wasn't a bet. I was just, I was just sure I was not going to lose five bucks. Sure enough, he checks his phone nine o'clock in the morning, $1,300 sold. Dude, just went off the charts after that. So yeah, I'm glad uh, uh, I was happy to keep my $5 and even happier to see a goose making some bank while sitting there on prime day. Uh, Connie says sold two and a half times my normal on prime day and even better the next day. It was crazy. Wow. That, that is kind of insane, Connie. Uh, I did not see that kind of boost the next day. Hey Dean, what's happening? Thanks for being here. Um, uh, but yeah, so Prime Day was definitely a big boost. All right, so here's here's some of what I talked with Mindy about also. I'm telling you guys, it was a cool conversation. You need to get out there and talk to people. But he's like, bring up your ASP. I was like, I kind of like the volume sales. And what I saw a lot of, I was looking today, some of my top sellers, um, we're selling, in the last two weeks, we've sold anywhere from uh, 70 to 100 of about five different products, okay, in, the, in 14 days. So we're averaging six to maybe eight 
sales a day on our top five or six products. Now, some of those are making $3 a piece, not huge, right? But if you sell six a day, that's 18 bucks. At the end of the month, you've now banked eh, about $600, five to $600, but that's profit in your pocket, okay? And it just, easy to prep, send it out all day long. So I do like that kind of stuff. But Mindy said, dude, you gotta get your ASP up because it doesn't take much of a fluctuation to just wipe out a $3 profit. He's absolutely right. Because a couple of our other products that are in that same top five, top seven, whatever it is, um, those did take a hit. And every time we sell one, we're losing about eh, 65 cents. So that hurts a lot. Think about that. Now I'm looking to the side because that's actually where my camera is. But let me tell you, low profit stuff, high volume is a tough game to play when somebody comes in with a large quantity and crushes the price. They will wipe out your profit. And I'm taking a little bit of hit on that. You know, I'm, I'm watching it. So every time one sells, yeah, we, we've sold a hundred of them. Like I said, top selling product. And we're losing about 65 cents every time one sells. That stinking hurts. I'm, I'm telling you right now. But what am I going to do? Sit on a bunch of inventory that may or may not sell or, you know, at a higher price later on, not doing it, getting my money out. So, um, you, you just gotta, you gotta suck it up sometimes. Um, uh, but Mindy said, you know, if you get your ASP up and things change by three or $5, it doesn't really hurt you if you're making 10 to $20 on that item or even more. I mean, he's got some insane, uh, margins. You know, he's got, he's got a huge ASP, kicks the snot out of mine. Now, I, I, I think it was at least, what, double or something. It might even been more than that. Uh, just crazy margins. So you have to decide what you're comfortable with and let it play out. But take a hard look at the numbers. There are some things that I have done that I wouldn't do again. Uh, I've learned my lesson. They were, yeah, I went too deep. Um, it was too th too thin a margin and just a little bit of fluctuation, boom, it was gone. And one of them, I'll tell you, it has a map on it, right? Map of $16.95. And right now it's nowhere near $16. Okay. It just got crushed, even though it has map, right? Nobody's supposed to be able to break it. It, it, it can hurt you. So if you're going to play the high volume, low margin game, just be prepared to take some losses. And uh, that's a tough that, that was a tough lesson to learn. And Mindy's right, you know, do some higher stuff. So I did some RA yesterday and it was all much higher margins. You know, it's a uh, higher ASP. Yeah. So, you know, I'm looking at stuff that costs 20 that sells for 40. Uh, looking at stuff that was 15 selling for 35. So, you know, the, all, all a little bit higher selling price than, than uh, what I've got in the in stock right now. Oh, Eric said my ASP is seventy three eighty nine. That is insane. Of course, what he's not telling you is he only sold one product today and it was for eight eighty dollars. But yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Just kidding. That uh, that is that is crazy. Congratulations on that. Yeah, I, you know, I would love to sell forty eighty dollar items. That would that would make my days much better than forty eighteen dollar items. Uh, still happy, but I am going to change. You know. That's what I'm telling you about having these conversations. It will make you change how you do things. And that's one of the things I'm going to change. All right. I've had this screen up for a little while. So let me stop screen share for just a second. And I'm going to go ahead and refresh and make sure everything's all. Aha. See, it did. It logged me out. I knew it would. I'm getting better with this stuff. All right. So we'll bring up the reports again. I knew I was running my jaw too much. I said, no, you need to, you need to log in again. All right. Uh, Screen share. Oh, we're up to 50 people. Holy cow. Thank you guys. I appreciate everyone that has joined us late. Um, <laughs> all right. I'll goose you crazy. Uh, all right. Huh. Yeah. Let me just click on this by ASIN. Does that tell you that's like muscle memory? I was just about to show you my whole stinking catalog. That would have been good. All right. Let's look at the month to date, which is going to be a little bit skewed because of Prime Day. Obviously, there's a big boost with Prime Day in there, but we're at 23800 on the 22nd of July, so I'm happy with that. Still cranking the $1,000 a day. Uh, you know, some of that is because of selling off inventory. Some of that is because Prime Day, but you know what? I'll take every boost I can get in July, and I am expecting a huge August. We've spent almost $10,000 already on back-to-school stuff, so either it's going to sell and we're going to make bank, 
or I'm going to get stuck with a whole bunch of inventory. And I don't think that's the case, but we are setting ourselves up for a big, big August. Uh, I'm excited about August and, and possibly September as well. Now that I've taken a look back at some of my numbers and, and saw how well we did in September of last year as well. But month last year, 11,000. We're already double what we did last year. So I'm excited about that. Um, you know, year over year is just incredible. I, uh, this, this year has been insane. Michael Flanagan laid down the $500,000 challenge. I thought he was crazy. Shoot, he may not be as, as crazy as I thought he was. Uh, let's go down here to custom. Take a quick look at the year to date. So we are, oh, 169,000. So we are almost at 170. Uh, same time last year, we were at 63,000. So we are over a hundred thousand dollars more this year than we were last year. Um, definitely over twice what we had sold last year. So insane, uh, year over year increase. <laughs> and Michael said, yeah, I'm still crazy, but not about doing 500,000 this year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> No, you, you nailed that one. I didn't think it was possible. I'm starting to believe that it might actually be possible. But, you know, the, the, the other thing is I got to make sure my, my profits match the sales. I want to keep my profits up. And that's where things have slipped a little, taking a little bit lower profit to make those bigger numbers. Uh, but am I taking half the profit? No, not at all. So we are definitely making more money this year than we were last year. Top 20 categories. You know, if you guys want to look through them, there they are. There's all 20 of them. Shoes, we're up to 276. I'm still loving shoes. Um, you know, I, I think I'm going to move more into a, adult shoes instead of just the kids. But I, I've stayed away from that a lot, but I'm starting to see a, a big potential in the adult shoes. So going to focus more on that. Uh, grocery is still our top seller. Toys still our top grossing. And you can see right on down the line how things play out. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight. If there's anything specific you want me to look at, I'll be more than happy to. Uh, but that's our, our numbers in a nutshell. And you see we're, we're right on pace for what we're, uh, what we're trying to do. And yeah, Eric says adult shoes are a higher price. Get that ASP up. Absolutely. Yeah, got to get out. <laughs> got to get out of here. See you, peeps. All right. Thanks, Mindy. Again, appreciate all your help. I uh, look forward to talking to you more in the future. And uh, thanks for stopping by tonight. Uh, number four gross sales is beauty. I'll take partial credit for that. Yes, sir. Michael Flanagan, you do get partial credit for that. Uh, there's, there's a few people that get credit for that. And it's yeah. Beauty's beauty's going to be a strong finish to this year. I, I do believe. All right. Cindy asks, Dwayne, when you sell items at a higher ASP, are those still fast turns or are your items taking longer to sell? Um, I, I don't know how to do slow turn stuff. I, I really don't. And it's probably an issue of mine. You know, it's almost to a detriment. I cannot hold on to stuff. So no, it's all fast turn. You know, I, even with the higher ASP, I, I want it to sell now. And if it's not selling now, I get very impatient very quickly. You know, the the toys that I, I had since Q4, man, they, they tested my patience. I I, it killed me not to get rid of them, but I was like, I do not want to take this loss. I, I don't want to, don't want to. When it showed up on my long-term storage fee, I said, forget it, you're out of here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Agu says, that, that's your problem, Dwayne. Good problem to have. Yeah, so I, uh, nothing's changed for me. Okay, a anything else you guys want to see in the numbers? No, I will touch on the, the fast turns for just a second. Yeah, every, everything's still moving pretty fast. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to take this down. All right, I get this question a lot. What what category has fast turns? Um, you know, and you're asking higher ASP. Does that mean slower turn? No. Okay, I I'm selling women's shoes that are ranked 200 in all of shoes. ASP is over forty dollars. That is a fast turn, high ASP, high profit pair of shoes. This stuff is there. So don't think, oh gosh, I need to buy something that's ranked 400,000 in kitchen and hasn't sold since October of 2013. But hey, if it sells two years from now, it's going to be a great ASP and I'm going to make money. No, no. I mean, it is harder to find the higher ASP stuff. And that's why I sell a lot of 
three to five dollar profit items because hey lower price tends to drive more traffic you know more people are willing to pay twenty dollars for something than to to pay fifty dollars for something but there are people out there willing to pay the fifty dollars okay so you just have to find the the stuff that still has great rank that still has asp um no you lose cash flow uh lose cash uh I mean lose cash flow if you tie up the money in in slow turning items if if that's what you're referring to then I agree yeah you're going to tie up cash flow for no reason you know I'd rather flip lower price stuff a few times than wait on that one higher selling item that's how I've always run things um yeah and you have to have capital if you're going to sit on stuff you definitely have to have capital even though I have capital I don't want to sit on stuff it's just not in me I'm telling you guys this fast turn thing was not like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just come up with this little shtick and I'm going to sell myself as the fast turn guy. No, I get jittery when stuff sits at the freaking warehouse for too long. So I sell it. I get rid of it and I go buy better stuff that's going to sell for a better margin. Or I buy really good stuff and it sells the minute it gets there for great margins. There's that too. Okay, so there, there I, but I cannot, I have a real hard time holding anything. I, I sincerely cannot do it. It drives me nuts to see stale inventory. Uh, Eric says, I got Nike's 2200 rank, so two pairs a day at $120 a pair. Thank you for that, Eric. There you go. That's as fast turn as you're going to find with as high an ASP as you're going to find, I think, anywhere. But that is great proof of exactly what I'm talking about. Find the high, high dollar stuff, and people are going to buy it. It's in demand. You see the rank. There's still a rank. There's still indicators showing you what you're going to make. You don't have to trade one for the other. You just, it, it's harder to find. It's more work to find that. Um, but it is going to be a bigger part of our business going forward. Not, not the slow turn, but the higher ASP. Still fast turn, just higher ASP. Uh, yep, just sold three pair today between $109 and $150. There's Craig telling you. He's, he's killing it. I'm telling you, there is money in these, these adult shoes. I'm, it's, it's there. So I'm getting excited about that. That's one of the things I'm going to turn to to raise my ASP because I see the potential. Um, and that's his first shoe buy. That's, <laughs> if that's true, that is crazy. Uh, that's, that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, and, and it's not just that. I mean, we've sold some high dollar kitchen stuff that sold very quickly. You know, they're high dollar toys that sell very quickly, ranked under 5,000 in toy blown out the door. So, um, Bought, bought some home items today, ranked under 10 in home and kitchen, okay, $13, selling for 30 That's a higher ASP than what I'm used to. It's going to freaking fly out the door. Um, <laughs> all right, and Craig's giving a shout out to his sourcing group. That helps too. Um, all right, so anyway, you guys get the idea. Now, if you want to learn more about shoes, I will give you a quick sales pitch. We are coming up on uh, the, the first of the month. So today's the 22nd. You've got about 10 days before Threads and Treads comes up. Yep, Mark Levine knows. Uh, Threads and Treads is going to open up in about a week to new subscribers. So if you want to join Threads and Treads, get on the list now. There's a lot of, there's a lot of groups out there. Okay? I talked to REA when I was in Orlando about his group. Now, it, it is totally different than Threads and Treads, okay? His group is, I think, $150 a month. Um, and you, you can PM him if you want more information, but it, it's a high-dollar um, group, but they do online sourcing, okay? And they do a whole different business model. And I heard that uh, uh, Beaver, I think, came out with a sourcing group today, okay? There are other groups out there. Threads and Treads is very unique. Threads and Treads gives you Amazon flips teaches you how to do Amazon flips. There's a whole file section filled with coaching that we will teach you that stuff. Also, we have daily flips. We, we have paid people that go out to find Amazon flips for you. They post at least six flips a day. That's, that's just the paid people. And then Becky and David and Lisa throw in their own flips. I, you know, there's no guaranteed count on those, but as they find them, they throw it out there you are very easily getting 10 flips a day to choose from, all right? So 10 flips a day, 
that's 50 a week. You know, I talked to Becky, she said, well, probably about 40 a week. Anyway, you're getting 40, 50 flips a, a week. Plus you get the information on how to make those flips. We're not going to give you high ranking items to, to sell. Uh, the group is a hundred dollars a month. So it's lower priced than some of the others out there. It's different than some of the others out there because we, we both teach you how to do it and we give you great flips to buy. Okay. So that, that's what differentiates threads and treads. Now, REA has a great group. You want to go to his group, PM him. That's cool. I got to tell you, uh, I'm kind of, kind of partial to threads and treads. I don't like the idea of just buying off of a list from someone else. That's me. I kind of like more of a hands-on approach. That's why I coach people. That's why I work with people. Becky, David, Lisa do a great job of teaching you guys how to buy those flips. I don't do as much of the teaching because I'm still learning this stuff. I am not in a position to teach you. They are. They are excellent at what they do. So that's, that's kind of my spiel on threads and treads. If you want to learn about getting the higher dollar flips, like the one of them that, that we had was uh, Healy's. Okay, got posted. They were sixteen fifty. I sold all of mine between about thirty five and forty five dollars. Other people held out longer than I did, and they got fifty five and sixty dollars for those. Again, higher ASP stuff. It's in there. It's available. So low ranks, high ASP, great flips. It's all there at Threads and Treads. If you guys want to join, get on the join list now. We'll send you a PM on the first. If you don't get that PM send me a message personally. I think I'm friends with just about everybody in the world. So send me a PM. Some of them get blocked. It's not that we don't send them. It's that Facebook doesn't allow them to go through or they get stuck in your other folder. Weird stuff happens. Uh, so just PM me. All right. Uh, what's the Facebook group link? It is facebook.com slash groups slash threads and treads. That'll take you to our group. Uh, Craig said he got on the list. Appreciate that. Um, Leron said he just joined Beaver. See, so there, are, Leron, awesome guy going over to Beaver's group. I got no problem with that. There are groups out there that are available. Different people need different stuff. So I'm just trying to tell you what I know Threads and Treads provides. I like all these people. I assume that all their groups are great. Okay. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to bash on anyone else's group. I'm just telling you, I think Threads and Treads is, is a little heads and shoulders above the rest because we show you how to find your own deals, and we give you deals. So, <laughs> threads and treads, why, why, why we're selling shoes now. Thank you, Candace. See, there you go. Candace is in threads and treads, buying the shoes, doing the flips, making the money. So, that's, that's what we want for you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, you can PM me, you can PM Becky, you can post it in Fast Run Radio. I'm accessible, Becky's accessible, Lisa, David, everybody. If you have any questions, let us know. So that's my little pitch for threads and treads. I just want to say it because a lot of people uh, wait till the last minute to join and then they wonder why they didn't get a PM or, you know, it's just get on the list early. Make sure you, you've got your spot saved. If there's any question after the first, you can even get a hold of me then. If you didn't get the PM, just let me know. I'll send you the link. We'll get you signed up. But all right. Man, we covered a lot of stuff tonight. Oh, that last question of the night. Uh, we'll make this. May, if you think it should, say yes. I am considering doing a show every other week instead of weekly. So should I change Fast Turn Radio to a every other week show? Okay. <laughs> Joe says no. Lisa says no. All right. The no's are starting to come in. All right. <laughs> Two shows a week. Yeah, you know that's not happening. All right. I mean, seriously, I do this for you guys. So I want to make sure that I'm giving you great information and I'm not taking up too much of your time. Okay. So you guys want to keep it a weekly show? No, I'm not wearing myself out. Shoot. I didn't talk for an hour. That's no big deal. It, it, I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm not wasting your time. That's all that I'm giving you valuable information every week and that, you know, it's, it, it's worth your time, honestly. Okay. <laughs> introvert my foot <laughs> uh, okay very valuable all right guys uh all right i just i just wanted to check gotta run brother on the phone thank you sarah for being here your husband is awesome one of these days i'm going to meet you in person as well um okay i seriously i just wanted to know and if you guys you know nobody wants to say it in the chat room seriously please give me your feedback if you think 
hey, thread, or threads and threads, Fast Turn Radio should be every other week, but you don't want to say it in front of everybody, send me a message and say, yeah, you know what? It's kind of dry if we do it every week, do it every other week. I just want to know. I, I want to make sure I'm, I'm giving you value for your time. You're giving me your time, giving you stuff. If you're not getting stuff, tell me. All right. <laughs> Kenya said, oh, heavens no. Great use of my time to listen to you. Okay. Uh, he can get guest hosts real easy. That's another, actually, that, that is a possibility too. Uh, if anybody is interested in being a guest host, maybe I'll do more of that. I just want to give you guys variety and I'm terrible at interviews, so I try not to do too much of that. Uh, <laughs> Michael for guest host. All right, we might do that. I, I, might, I might talk to Mike and see if he wants to do a show one of these days very soon. Uh, just cause, and if anybody else wants to, you know, if you want to see what Zoom is all about, you want an audience, I'll give you an audience. You know, we've got what, 50 people here and uh, another 50 to 100 that listen and watch each week. So you'll get, you'll find out about people. How about Mindy for a guest host? That would be cool. Uh, yeah, I, I'll talk to Mindy. I would like to have him on here too. So Michael, smart guy. Uh, I've done conferences with him. Mindy, he, I think I've, I've talked about him enough. You should have a good idea of, of my feelings on him now. So, all right, we'll bring in some guest hosts maybe. I just, I just feel like I'm repeating myself and I'm not giving you guys the value. It's really, it's a me concern. All right. And everyone wants to know what he really looks like. All right, good deal. Thank you guys. You hung out a little late. I'm sorry I ran long, but I did want to put that out there. If anybody does have feelings that you don't want to express, PM me. Tell me, you know, express in public. PM me personally. Won't go any further than me and you. But uh, all right, guys. Not too late for back to school. Get that stuff in. It's got to go, though. You're missing a huge opportunity. Our, our back to school last year was huge. So don't miss it. Get on it. We'll see you next week. And uh, hope everybody has a great, profitable week. And uh, we'll do it again Wednesday, 8 o'clock, Fast Turn Radio. See you guys.